Well, hello there everyone. And today we're taking a look at how we can make laser cutting way more easier if you would be using Grasshopper. So for example, if you have this surface here, right? Um, and this surface basically will be cut into several pieces with the laser cutter like this, you see? And then we maybe, for example, you want to change around the basic geometry of it or change the the ground thing for it and then we can also obviously have the um, cutout piece that we use for our building or we want to put in the building in and it automatically updates the surroundings of it as well so if you don't know how, how this works then follow along and let's get into it great so we will just start with a new grasshopper file and basically what you need is just a surface input that we're gonna use with geometry right click it's a geometry here i'm gonna hide this and then we have to also use um uh, one surface for our one surface for our basic rectangle and then also another surface for our for our cutout that we need inside here as well so this will be our like base thing where we want to cut out the main surface from and then we also take the other one here that we have from about here great so now that we have those we are going to project them at least one of them we do so we're going to project um as the beard up here and we're going to project the surface here and then we're going to extrude this surface actually downwards into the z direction and it needs to be actually quite a high number like minus like let's say 1000 or depending on how you choose your scale it might to be might need to be a bigger number and then we need to actually cut this surface a little bit open so we're gonna use the um, under shape split b rep we're gonna use um, the extrusion here and we're gonna use the cutter as the input surface and this then gives us two trimmed surfaces and we're going to use the um i think the first or second one i'm not that sure at least one of the two yeah the first one great and we also um gonna cut uh, the surface that we have uh, as our main topography and we're going to use a physical and a surface split and we're going to use the surface uh, the curves that we have here and the surface that we have there and again need to cut them out correctly but this time is integer number one in the index great now we're just gonna hide all the things that we have for now more or less and this will be basically our surface that we want to um, have those kind of stripes in there so we're gonna use the contour command and we're gonna before we do that we're also going to um, uh, under shape and then we're going to, well, we can use solid union, but we can also use join b -rep. And we're just going to shift click those things together. And then we have to also flatten the input. And this will be then our shape that we want to um, basically go through. And this, the point will be 0, 0, 0, which is fine because you go from the zero level. And then the direction will be up here, like normally. And we have to put an integer there as well. Um, so we have the distance in between the contours. Again, you have to kind of calculate how much how thick your material will be, and you also need to think of your um, uh, the scale of the model in general. So this is like our quite a lot. Maybe let's do this a little bit bigger, 25. And you see now we already have a very nice contour shape around here. Great. Well, that's great and all, but um, now we still have this piece around here that's like just lying around, and we can kind of integrate this in an intelligent way because right now we're just cutting one by one and we're gonna use the region difference command in order for it to make this more useful in our case. So in this case, um, we have, if you cannot take a look at the list of the contour list here, we have a, quite a lot of planar curves, but sometimes we also have two. And this is because at this place, for example, here on the top, they're actually gonna um, create two surfaces every time, like, or two contours. So um, we're gonna move those contours that we have from those things up here, like 
this initial one. You're gonna move it up as many um, of those tree branches are. In this case, we have um, from number zero to 18. So we have 19 tree branches and we can get this by, if you're gonna go to tree statistics, which is actually findable under um, set tree and then tree statistics. We're gonna use the list length command and then by that we get those 19 different branches. And we're gonna move um, this piece up as many branches there are. So we're gonna use a series, gonna use the count, and the steps are basically the same distance that we had here for the contours. And we're gonna use this as the Z component. I'm gonna put this in here. So now we have our very nice kind of pieces here that are going up and up and up all, all the time. Oh, and we actually, we might want to, um, um, no, I think they are, they're going the correct way. That's why that's fine. Good. And now we have our basic uh, our polar lines and we actually have to graph them in order for them to be in the same like branches here. And we have to then with the um, region intersect, the region difference, we're going to use the, the um, I'm always confusing which one to use first, but let's just try it out. I think it's gonna be fine. And yeah, this was actually the correct one. And you see it basically cuts out the piece that we have here. So it's gonna hide the other things. You see it cuts out the piece that we wanted to use. And if you say, okay, I wanna have it somewhere different. It cuts, it out, cuts them out just separately and also works for uh, inside piece as well. So if you are just having this piece, for example, that you wanna cut out, then it's gonna be fine. So um, not only that, but we also, because right now here we have the, the surroundings of our like base plate, we also want to do this with this place here. So in this, we're just gonna use a different command. It will be from region intersection. So this will be then um, the same as here. And then we're gonna use as well the contours here. And this basically gives, gives our, like the missing puzzle piece of it, as you see, it's very, very nice. Cool, now that we're actually almost done, and we only need to create an actually like laser cut file through it that we can use and then further manufacture. Um, so let me actually take a look. This will be, um the thing here we're gonna yeah we're gonna create a bounding box through this so we go under actually I'm just gonna type it in bounding box and i have to type correctly though that's a very important part of it and then this then creates each bounding box for each pieces but again it does it per object we need to right click it and then actually use it per union box so this then gets, gets us like a dimension of each box and we can either explode it actually, which might be not the correct way, no, but we can, um, well, let's do deconstruct box. I think that's gonna be fine. And this gives us basically like two dimensions. Um, and if we deconstruct the domain of those dimensions, because they're always like, like from two, you know, deconstruct domain it basically gives us two values and we need to use the x one because i want to use them put them on the more on the right side and those gives us two values and we actually need to sub subtract them so like this against that one and this then gives us the value of how much we need to use it or like move it to the right basically and this will be um needs to be flattened because I want to mass um, add them together. And then by doing that, I'm getting like an increasingly higher count. And this will be then our base thing uh, for moving it to the right. So like that. And then we use the geometry that we created here. And we also actually need to graph that as well. And as you see, it puts them just one by one uh, right next to each other. And we're also gonna use the same one for um, the, the other piece over here. So then you have them basically um, right next to each other. Um, 
and they get like cut out automatically in a way. Yeah, also don't forget to remove duplicate curves um, once you have baked them, for example. This is also kind of important because otherwise the laser goes up upon this thing um, twice. And if you also want to have a slight um, offset, which is re actually recommendable, um, from this piece at least, I would really recommend it because um, it's sometimes not good if it's exactly the same size. So having a slight offset in there calculated is actually a very good thing. Um, yeah, there's another thing I want to just quickly do because um, I think it would be good to just project them to zero. So you can always project. It would be more intelligent to project first, but we can also just uh, well, project to like this project to the other one. And use the same for this one as well. And yeah, so that's basically it. And that's how you can really create really nice, um, if you have like, you know, if you have some surfaces that you want to create, um, it's a really good way of just seemingly or seamlessly um, manipulate the surface because sometimes you want to have like pieces in those things where you can um, change it around and, and change it. Uh, and because normally you need to like redraw every single piece every single time and if you just want to change around oh you know what i want to have this thing a bit different then you just put it over there and yeah it goes like that and obviously if we would do like a rectangular uh, dimension more like this we can obviously always just input this as our um, main curve like here just use this one and then it also uh, should recalculate, but it doesn't for some reason right now. Let me take a look. Mm. Maybe it's like the wrong uh, path or something. This is got created correctly. Then you have this. Ah, yeah, because it doesn't. I think it doesn't extrude them downwards correctly, right? Da -da -da. Ah, yeah, maybe it would be also useful to use um, a bounding box as well or like cap it at least like this just put this in here and then I think it should work correctly um, just in case this one is this one ah, it doesn't it doesn't cut them correctly that's why uh, I think this is the curve that we used and then it doesn't gives us the result, ah, we need to actually change the result here. Okay, you should need to be careful when you're cutting them out um, as well, that you need to like choose between the correct one in this case. But this is just like a very like kind of like getaway of doing it, but it still works, you know? Okay, <laughs> nice little bug fixing session at the end. So um, yeah, if you, this is basically like the way of how I did, there was also a nice rendering that I made for that, um, how it could basically also look like. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, hope this helped you out because I think it's always a pain to kind of take your thing and you know put it out and put it in. And I think this is a very good way of getting around that and make it more streamlined. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.